I love creating peace and ending conflict. Um, personally, I have always hated conflict. If someone ever confronted me, I would shut down and tense up and not talk. And I just hate conflict. And I don't like when people fight and scream and raise their voices. It literally freaks me out. So being able to see a conflict and talk to people and talk them out of their anger and create the peace within them, it just feels like, first of all, I feel at peace. And second of all, I feel like completed and I feel like I did something by helping these people become at peace. Because I've had lots of friends and friends in relationships with fights, like breaking up the friend group, like lots of drama. And all, to, all the time I just try to stay in the middle, not pick a side give them my advice, try to like make it as peaceful as possible, try to help both sides and talk them through it just so that the conflict can end because that's all I want in life is for there to be no conflict because it really stresses me out. I feel like I've done a good job of making as much peace as I can. How do you make peace in your life? In my life? Give us some examples of you making peace and ending conflict. Like my own conflict? Anybody. Because you said that you love creating peace and ending conflict. So give us an example of that. Have um, you been successful? Well, one of my friends and her boyfriend were going through a breakup. And at the time, I was just, this was like, what, the fourth time they'd broken up. I was over it, and I wanted to talk some sense into them. And I picked up the phone, called the boyfriend, sat down, and talked on the phone with him for 30 minutes to an hour, just saying, like, tell me everything that's on your mind. I want to hear everything. I want to hear how you're feeling. And he did, and he told me. And I told him what my girlfriend wants, needs, what her problems are in the relationship, why she feels the way she does. And it kind of gave him an easier perspective and like changed his perspective. Because when you're breaking up with someone, it's hard to communicate because you're blocking each other and you're being petty and doing all this stuff. So I just, I know it wasn't my business and I probably shouldn't have done this, but I stepped in and picked up the phone, called him, told him what was up, listened to him because it's really important to listen to people instead of just talking the whole time. And they got back together after that, and my best friend thanked me for it. <laughs> but um, did they stay together? No, sadly they didn't. But how long did they stay together that time? Uh, I'm not sure. Longer than the others? I don't really remember the time frame, but they were together for like three or four years. But they broke. Well, at that time they had broken up. I think you said four times previously. Yeah, they broke up like it all the time. But what did I, they break up over? I can't really say. Codependency. Mm. Well, like, what would, they, would what would be the would there be a disagreement? Would they not I understand don't, each I other? Don't wanna, like, expose them. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the fifty thousand uh, foot um, view of it. I guess yeah, codependency. They relied on each other for everything, and they it wasn't healthy. Then one would meet the other person's unreasonable expectations. They'd get upset, not feel loved. Mm. I'm out of here. Um, I don't know. They were really complicated. It was more of just like miscommunications, being hot-headed, impulse, making decisions quick. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It was lots of miscommunication, and he was going through – crazy time in his life with his own personal issues and she was going through her own personal issues and they were together and it's hard to be in a relationship when you have all this crazy chaotic wild stuff going on in your life and just trying to like focus and love this person when you honestly can't even make the time to love yourself so it was a lot a lot a lot of things that happened like it's I couldn't just say oh yeah this is what happened it was like it's really hard to whole story line. this is a complicated story but I loved sitting down and talking to him 
because he had a lot to say. And I love just being like, all right, tell me everything that's going through your mind. And a lot of stuff he'd say, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, no, don't do that. Try and talk it out of it. But that's try- kind of how I tried to create peace with my friends. I would help guide them and talk them through stuff. Even if it didn't work, I tried, and that's all that matters. But um, I don't really do that anymore because I feel like that's kind of intruding on their own problems. And it wasn't my problem at all. So oh, I kind of so learned to step back. they didn't come to you for back. help? You no. offered oh. your help? I stepped in and said, I'm tired of hearing this. Let me deal with it. So you just got tired of dealing with your friends always well, having fucking drama. seeing my friend in pain. You she preferred was, to have a drama-free zone in your yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. She was just always in pain, and I, I didn't like seeing her sad. So I wanted to try to help in the best way I could. And in turn, it would alleviate unwanted drama in your life. Yes. So in a way, you were looking out for yourself. Yeah, but I don't want to it was it an act way, of self-love. You, you sought to help another person because if you were able to help them, you would be helping yourself. Mm-hmm. Because it'd be less drama. Yeah, true. I, that's not how I want to think of that's it. That's not how girls it. operate, though. Because I, I don't. That's how I, I see it. I did it for personally. her. I did. I wanted to At do it for her. Listening to you tell a story, that's what I see. All right. I, I didn't mean to put it that way. She was frustrated because these two were unable to work out. It just, they kept bouncing off each other. And Gracie thought, I can fix this. I want to help you. Well, I, I can see yeah. this for what it is. I like their connection, and I wanted them. These I didn't are want two them to be amazing apart. people that are both. They'd be so cute together. No, these are both like two Match beautiful, makers. amazing friends of hers, and she loves both Just of them like equally. Your mother. your mother, the matchmaker. Not no, equally. I'm <laughs> serious. Like women want. We're nurturing. We're nurturing. I and just want to help. We're loving, and, and yeah. we see two people that we love, and we can see what it is. What it, what's happening? We can see it for what it is. We want to jump in and go, we want everyone to be loving each other here. And I can help. I want to fix this. Not for selfish reasons, but because we love these people. We're nurturing. Women are nurturing mm-hmm. by nature. And but it's also an really act of self-love because you don't want to put up a drama. I think it's actually what we're called to do sometimes. You know, as a man, you want to build... You know, you want to make things, build wealth. You've got all these mission purpose stuff. I feel like as a woman, my goals in life are nurturing, t- caring. Someone's sick. I'm going to show up for them. Let me well, help it's them contribution. This. You're contributing to somebody else's life to make it better. That's one of the six human needs. And what's interesting about that need is that contribution fulfills all the other five. Certainty, variety, significance, love and connection, and spiritual growth. It's like when you contribute to other people and you're successful at helping them, or yourself for that matter, you feel better about yourself. You meet all those other needs. You gain certainty because you were able to do something. You feel significant. You feel important because you're able to help somebody. You feel love and connection because these are people you care about and who, who care about you. And variety because that's an interesting thing. It brings it's kind of what makes life cool. It's like, whoa, whoa. so that's I one was of our needs. Unconsciously helping myself by helping them by and spiritual fulfilling, growth. You grow fulfilling your actual mission in life. Yes, just f- not because you read in a book. Oh, this is what I need to do for a living. Just because it naturally happened. So it's also spiritual growth is also growing into who you're supposed to be. And the things that we do naturally like that, that's, you know, and as you said, your purpose is you want to help people. And you were already doing it. You're naturally doing it. So you're already practicing becoming Coach Gracie, whether you knew it or not. <laughs> oh, good. I love having experiences that change the course of life. Um, the moments that stick with you. So... A lot of the times, you either meet someone, start something, move somewhere. Um, that kind of changes your entire course of your life. And you can look back at that moment and realize that that changed the course of your life. So there's been lots of people who come into my life who introduced me to someone who I have a great connection with and who's my best friend now or... Um, show me um, 
like I, I went to a tumbling class once for I was trying to do cheerleading and I looked to my right and I see a dance team and I'm like I want to be on that dance team and I did it and if I didn't take that tumbling class I would have never have gone away with that five years time period time period of my life doing dance but just like little things happen in life that change the entire course of your life and it's just so fun and exciting to like know those experiences and feel the change and I don't know it's just who doesn't love those experiences it's rare like those yeah. ca- it's something that comes in your life like a catalyst and it changes everything like you meet one person it changes the direction of your whole life if you ever just sat and uh, thought back on your lifetime and thought about the people that changed the direction of your life because they sat next to you in class or they they were a roommate or you just worked m- together yeah Corey and I I, like we were 23 years old, my first job out of college, just meet this guy. We are his fiance and mine were friends and we ended up just double dating. And here we are 25, 30 years later working with each other. Crazy. It's crazy if you think about it. But there was a girl that sat in front of me in a class and she, her dad lived in Florida. We lived in Georgia and her dad lived in Florida and she goes, you know, we should go to school in Florida and go to Florida State. You know, it's the party school of the South. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And I didn't, I didn't know where I was going to college. I was a junior in high school. I ended up going just because this girl that sat in front of, the, of me in class just brought it up one day. And that girl changed the trajectory of my whole life. It's where I met my husband. It's where I got married, had my children, everything, just because that one girl brought up that topic. If you think about all of the people you in your been life, in a whole different state if or the ever. person that got me the job at Detaco changed the tra- trajectory of my whole life, you know? So you're, you're well, right. She in essence helped me get the job because when sh- she answered the phone, I instantly felt like I knew her already. And then I remember walking in the door, we were talking about this the other night and I walked in the door of the office and then she was sitting at a desk in the back somewhere and we locked eyes and I just kind of felt like I, I knew her already. And she even went to bat. She later told me, like, Tony, you got to hire this guy. He's awesome. Or he's sharp or whatever. And, and I eventually got the job. We became friends. Obviously, our, um, we double dated with our ex-spouses back in the day. <laughs> 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 and we just, you know, over the years, always, always kind of kept in touch and watched you guys grow up. And, um, life's crazy. D- double dated with other girlfriends that I had along mm-hmm. the way over, over the years. And, uh, you know, 30 years later, here we are. And now we're working together with the next generation and all that, those dots that connected and all that information and that experience now is in you. And when you talk, then you have the opportunity to influence people around the world. The tra- trajectory yes, of, of somebody lives. else. Yes, exactly. So it's an honor. It's a privilege. It's a, a great responsibility to do that. And it's something that you're just, you know, you, what you were talking about with your friends, you were already doing that. You, it's not because like, hey, give me 20 bucks and I'll listen to you fucking run your mouth about your girlfriend problems for – 20 minutes you like you generally wanted to help them you were doing it for free in essence because you cared and that's how your purpose just kind of chooses you you just kind of start doing it in a way but m- most people don't figure out how to monetize that or how to you know turn that into a business or a career or whatever and then they end up doing something that because they got to be realistic or whatever and so it's just interesting if you can capitalize on it at 19 You'll save yourself a lot of time down the road if you can recognize your gifts and your talents yep. earlier. Develop because you get paid based on the value that you bring to the marketplace. Your re- reserve of knowledge, your your skills, your gifts, your talents that you de- develop by practicing and going through repetitions. That's how you get better. Just like working out, you get better. Or juicing, you get better at that. Talking on camera. You get better at that. You were talking about earlier about saying the word like less. Because if you say the word like less, you sound older. And then that will affect how, 
uh, you know, how people perceive you as well. Um, I feel like all humans have parts of their life that's like fate that are meant to happen, like the butterfly effect. Like you're supposed to have this happen to you for all this other stuff to happen. And I, a lot of times I know when I'm in that moment and I feel like everything just coming together and it just feels good. And I love like traveling and getting that different perspective that changes the rest of how I live my life. I just feel like I, I love getting like the information I need to carry on. I don't know. That's how to explain that. Describe one of those events in your life that was life changing. Um, Give us an example. Well, back in high school, I was really young, immature. Don't want to say stupid, but stupid. I don't know. I was very closed minded. I had lots of negative thoughts in my head. I didn't know how to go about my day and just like be happy. I don't know. It, it was a very just like low time of life. And my mom saw that in me. She told me that like I didn't really have the spark in my eyes anymore. And I was just like going through life. So she planned a trip to New York, which I was just like, yeah, I, New York's cool. Like I want to go. So we went and I wasn't expecting to like change the entire course of my life on that trip. But just being in a different habitat and being with different people, being surrounded by art and museums and traffic and a whole different culture. And I went and saw Hamilton, the musical, and, like, it's so weird how, like, little experiences, like, seeing a musical could, like, change your whole life. Like, after that trip, I had a whole different perspective on myself and who I was and who my family was and what I wanted to do with my life and how I wanted to act and, like, how I wanted to think. I feel like just a little trip like that with like the people you care about changes everything. Sorry for that rant. But how I described it was like the moments that stick with you throughout your life, like the things that you will always remember. Because it was a pattern interrupt what we call in life coaching where you change something or you say something that's dramatic, like that makes people pay attention and go, oh, I can't believe you just said that. Where you tell somebody it's just real or – like when I'm doing a phone session with a guy and everybody in his life is like, oh, it'll work out. If it's meant to be, it'll be. That's the kind of crap that he's hearing. And I'm like, dude, she's a fucking whore. She's cheated on you ten times. She belongs in the streets. You can be the best man you can be and she may fall – You know, she'll fall back in love. But as soon as you slack off again, she's going to be texting or talking to another guy. And you got to decide whether or not that's you're cool with that. So and, just like honesty. And then, yeah, exactly. So I'm brutally honest with them. And it's a pattern interrupt because that's what they need. That's why they pay me the money they pay me is because I'm going to tell them like it is and be real with them. And like in your case, your mother saw that you were suffering and she took you to New York. Just yeah, It's a complete sensory overload where you're living, what you're doing, the culture, the people, everything's – the smells, everything is different. Nothing yeah. is familiar. It's like a culture shock. Yeah. And I will – never thank my mom enough for taking me on that trip i love you mom (laughs) that's all i gotta say 